Hey, what is up guys? Jake here and welcome back to a brand new video. Now today, I'm sorry I decided to wear something that's a little lacking in colors. So in today's video, I wanted to break down my digital art process for doing more uh, line art kind of drawings. I do have two different styles. One is more painterly and the other one is, is more uh, traditional with line art and everything. Today, I want to go over my process for doing line art drawings and hopefully can help you guys out in your own digital art. Now, if you wish to see a more thorough and in-depth tutorial on how I go about digital drawings, tell me down in the comments below and I'll be sure to try and make a tutorial on that. Without further ado, Let's get started. So pretty much like any drawing, I like to start with a very basic sketch. Now in my style, I like to do the sketch and line art basically on the same layer. So I just start rough and try to get my basic shapes down and then refine it later on by just erasing the line, uh, making them more sharp, add more line variation and stuff like that. So I only work on one layer with that. Now I did this drawing last month as a present for one of my online friends. And it's not quite as finished as I would hope it would be, but it still looks pretty decent. It took me a whopping 20 hours in total to make this drawing. I do take my time with whenever I do draw nowadays. So in the past, uh, for me, four to eight hours would be an excruciating amount of time. But now I'm even surprised if I can even manage to get under 10 hours. It's not necessarily that I'm slow. I mean, it is part of the reason. But it's more because I really do take my time and try to go in detail and make sure that proportions are right, that everything looks nice. A tip that I can give you to make sure that your proportions are good and everything looks great is, this really only applies in digital art, but flip your canvas very often. I have mine, I have a hotkey bound to flip my canvas set on Control F, and quite literally every second to five seconds, I will flip my canvas to check if everything's looking right because I know I can't be trusted with going for long periods without flipping my canvas. Now that the line art is done, I go and make a new layer and I just fill in the entire character's white. And that is just a masking layer that you will create clipping masks on top of to make sure that your colors don't bleed onto the background or onto other characters. So I make a mask for each of the characters in the scene, each on their own separate layers and they have their own group with their flat colors and everything. So once you have your mask done, create a clipping mask and then you can add in your flat colors on top so that your colors don't bleed over to the background and characters like I explained earlier. For the background, what I like to do, if I want to create texture very quickly, make a finished looking background very quickly, is I'll just use photo textures and basically use photo bashing techniques to make sure that it looks like it's a part of the drawing and just saves me a ton of time.
And then after you're done with your flats, you want to create another, after you're done with your flats, you want to create another layer on top of that, set it to multiply with just black, and then you want to do what is called ambient occlusion shading. It is a trick that I learned from the artist Marc Brudet, which you can find here on YouTube. And it basically is, you just want to add shadows where two areas would intersect with each other. So the best example I can give is between the muscle groups, so like the pec and the abs, or with the biceps, under the chin. Those are some areas that you can add them. And we just want to keep black for now because we will be changing the colors later on. But it's just more simple to check your values with black for now. And as you can see, it just adds a lot of dimension very quickly to your characters. After you're done with the ambient occlusion layer, I create an overlay layer with a blending mode, uh, with outer glow blending mode, and then I just paint in the lights, which creates a very natural looking subsurface scattering, if done correctly. And after you're done adding lights, uh, some post processing effects that I usually like to add is rim lights. A uh, very bright light in the corner of the scene, if it makes sense to. Very bright highlights on things like the nose, the eyes and stuff. And then for your ambient occlusion layer, what you want to do is change the color of it from black to maybe like a dark blue or dark red. Something that fits the scene. And with that, that is basically the finished drawing. Like I said, it took me 20 hours over a whole week to finish. But I am still very proud of the results and my friend indeed really liked. So if you guys did enjoy this video, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe to stay up with my content in the future. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.